Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about solving linear equations and rewriting equations and formulas. So two learning goals. One, we need to be able to solve multi-step linear equations. So not just one thing that we're going to have to do to get the variable by itself, but multi-step, so multiple things that will be going on. And not just equations, but also formulas. And it says for a given variable. So in a formula, there are often multiple variables. So it's going to tell you, here's a formula, get H by itself, or get L by itself, so on. And second learning goal is to be able to write and solve linear equations based on a given situation. So that's like our word problems, being able to come up with an equation and then solve it to figure out the problem. Just a little bit of review from Algebra 1. Hopefully you remember this or it'll come back quickly. Remember that we solve equations by isolating the indicated variable, meaning get it by itself. So we have to move everything else away from that variable using inverse operations. And if you've never heard the term inverse or don't remember what it means, it's um, opposite operations. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction because we use subtraction to undo addition. So inverse operations is how we move everything away from the variable. Just a couple fraction reminders here because I know fractions sometimes trip people up. Um, if you have just a single fraction in front of the variable, which is what you have in example 1a there, to get rid of that fraction you are going to multiply by the reciprocal. Remember that a reciprocal is just flipping the numerator and the denominator. So multiply by the reciprocal if it's a single variable. If you've got multiple fractions in an equation, yes, you can get rid of them one at a time, but that's going to require you to come up with sometimes multiple common denominators to add or subtract, which just gets really complicated. So it makes it a lot easier if there are multiple fractions in an equation, like what we have in example 1c, that instead of just um, doing one step at a time, you get all, rid of all of the fractions at once by multiplying by the least common denominator, or the LCD. And as you can see, we'll have an example of that here in a second. So example 1a, solve the equation and check your solution. Remember, when it says check your solution, that doesn't mean that you have to write something else down, but anytime you solve an equation, you should know whether your answer is correct or not by plugging it back in either mentally or in your calculator and checking to make sure it's right. So let's look at example 1a, 2 ninths x plus 8 equals 16. So we want to get that x alone, which means we need to get rid of that added 8. So the inverse of addition is subtraction, so we're going to subtract 8 to get rid of that. Whatever we do to one side of an equation, we have to do to the other. So on the left, these will cancel. So I've got just my 2 ninths x remaining on the left side. On the right side, 16 minus 8 is 8. So I almost have my x alone. That 2 ninths in front is the only thing keeping that x from being alone. So like we reminded, up at the top, to get rid of a single fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 ninths, when you flip numerator and denominator, is 9 over 2. So we're going to multiply both sides, again, because whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we're going to multiply both sides by 9 over 2. So on the left, those are cancel because that's an inverse operation. So x is now alone. On the right side, 8 times 9 over 2, you have a couple choices here when you're multiplying by fractions. Um, you can either multiply top times top and bottom times bottom and then reduce or cross reduce first um, and then multiply. I do not care which way you do it. Um, most people, I think, do it the first way. So 8 times 9 is 72 and 1 times 2 is 2. 72 divided by 2 is 36. So I've got x equals 36. Again, once you come up with a solution, either with your calculator or mentally, plug it back in. So if I take 2 ninths times 36 and then add 8, I do indeed get 16, so I know that my solution is correct. Okay, so let's look at b here. 
We've got some parentheses going on. No fractions, though, so I'm sure that makes some of you very happy. So when I've got these parentheses, remember that that means I need to distribute because I've got 5 times this whole quantity. So 5 times x and 5 times negative 2. So 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Over here, I also have distribution to do with a negative 4. So negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Negative 4 times positive 7 is negative 28. And then do not forget that plus x that was on the end. It would be very bad to just leave that off. So on the left side, I don't have any like terms to combine. So it's just 5x minus 10. But on the right side, I do have like terms. I've got a negative 8x and a positive x, so I'm going to combine those. Negative 8x plus x is negative 7x. And then my negative 28 did not have a like term on that side. So here I've got variables on both sides. So that means I need to move all my variables to one side, all my plain numbers to the other. It does not matter which way you move them. I usually try to keep my variable positive um, on equations. So I'm going to move this negative 7x to the other side by adding. Pen's messing up there. Okay, so that gets rid of my variables on the right side. So if I moved my variables to the left, that means I need to move my constants, my plain numbers, to the right. So I need to move this negative 10. The inverse of subtraction is addition, so I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Again, these ones cancel out. So on my left, I've got 5x plus 7x, which gives me 12x. On the right side, I've got negative 28 plus 10, which is negative 18. So now, to get the x alone, divide both sides by 12. Negative 18 over 12 does not come out evenly, so we leave it in fraction form. In Algebra 2, this is big boy, big girl math. So our answers, unless it's a word problem, or unless there's already a decimal in the problem, all of your answers need to be in simplest fraction form. So negative 18 and 12 are both divisible by 6. That gives us negative 3 over 2 as our solution. Again, always plug it back in to check and make sure it works. All right, last equation practice. And I picked this one because it has multiple fractions, and I wanted to show you multiplying by the LCD. So LCD, remember, is the um, least common denominator. So if you were finding a common denominator for all three of these, what would be the least one you could have? Um, you learned how to do this earlier in your math career. Um, I think the easiest way to do it, instead of breaking it down into factors, which is usually how we teach it, is to take the biggest number, which in this case is 10, look at the other denominators and ask yourself, is 10 evenly divisible by 5? Yes. Then check the other one. Is 10 evenly divisible by 3? No, it's not. So then move up to the next multiple of 10, which is 20, and do the same thing. 20 is evenly divisible by 5, but it's not evenly divisible by 3, so go to 30. Is 30 evenly divisible by 5? Yes. Evenly divisible by 3? Yes. So that means that 30 is going to be my LCD, so I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 30. Again, the reason why I multiply by the LCD is it is going to get rid of all of my fractions in just one step. Instead of having to do three steps that all involve fractions, we can get rid of all of them at the same time. So 30 times 2 thirds gives me 20. So that's 20x. Then 30 times 1 fifth is 6, so I've got plus 6. 30 times 2x is 60x. Running out of space here. And 30 times negative 3 tenths is negative 9. So 
20x plus 6 equals 60x minus 9. I think to most of you that looks a lot better than what I had with the fractions. So I'm going to move all my variables to one side. This time I'm going to move them to the right. Again, just because I like to keep them positive, but it doesn't matter which side you move it to on these. So pen is not writing very nicely. So if I have moved my variables to the right this time, that means I need to move my plain numbers, my constants, to the left. So I'm going to add 9 to cancel this. Add 9. So these will go away. So on the left, I've got 6 plus 9, which is 15. On the right, I've got 60 minus 20, which is 40. So 15 equals 40x, divide both sides by 40, and that again does not come out evenly, but we can reduce it. The 15 and the 40 are both divisible by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, so numerator is 3, and 40 divided by 5 is 8, so x equals 3 eighths. Again, always simplest fraction form unless it is a story problem or if it already has a decimal in the problem. So. That gives you a couple examples for our first learning goal, solving multi-step linear equations. Now we're going to look at the second one, being able to write and solve a linear equation based on a given solution. All right, so it says a restaurant server earns a base salary of $6 per hour plus tips. Write a y equals equation to represent the situation. Let h stand for hours worked and t stand for tips earned. So it says y equals, so y is going to be total money, I suppose. So y equals, it says he earns base salary of $6 per hour. Per means each hour in this situation. So if you work for two hours, you get 6 plus 6, or 6 times 2. So we're taking 6 times the number of hours. So that would be 6 times h, which is just 6h. And it says T stand for tips earned. So it says $6 per hour plus tips. So that'd be plus T. If he averages $12 per hour in tips, how many hours must he work to earn a total of $333? So in this case, they're giving us a total. So that's our Y. So we can plug in 333. for our y, and then we've still got 6h, because we don't know hours, that's what we're trying to find, but it says $12 per hour in tips, so that means the plus t is actually also going to have an h on it, because the tips are $12 per hour. So on that right side, 6h plus 12h is 18h. So 333, don't know why it doesn't want to draw my second 3, so 333 equals 18h, so if we want to get h alone, we can divide both sides by 18, Let's see if it will make a better 8 this time. There we go. So 333 divided by 18. Now this is a word problem, so I said you're allowed to use decimals on word problems. It does not come out evenly. You should get h equals 18.5 hours. So in order to earn $333, he has to work 18 and a half or 18.5 hours. Hmm. 
looks like kindergarten handwriting there. I'm sorry about that. All right, let's look at example three. It says solve the equation for y using the given value of x. So this is being able to isolate a variable um, when you've got more than one, but it gives us the value of x. x equals negative four. So you can do this two different ways. You can either get y alone and then plug in your x or plug in your x first and then get y alone. I prefer the second. Again, it's your choice. They both work. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in negative 4 for x. So that gives me negative 4 times y. Equals, or not equals, minus negative 4. equals positive 4. So remember that minus negatives become pluses, so that gives me negative 4y plus 4 equals 4. So when I subtract 4 from both sides, it's going to cancel on both sides. It's going to give me 0 on the right and cancel it on the left. So these go away, these go away. So you've got negative 4 y equals 0. Uh, let me draw my 0 for some reason. There we go. So divide by negative 4, 0 divided by negative 4 is 0. So y should equal 0 there. All right, last example, and this goes back to the first learning goal, that part of it that deals with formulas. So it gives us a familiar formula here. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. Hopefully you have not forgotten that. You used it a lot in geometry. It wants us to solve that for h. So I'm going to rewrite it since my previous writing kind of overlapped. So if I want to solve for h, that means I want to get h alone. So I've got the 1 half and the b that both need to go away. Now, when no operation is written, remember that it's understood to be multiplication. So that's all multiplication there. If I want to get rid of a 1 half, fractions I get rid of by multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to get rid of the 1 half over there by multiplying by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1, so just 2. So whatever I do on that side, I also have to do on this side, so I'm going to multiply it by 2 as well. So that gives me 2a on the left side and since the 1 half canceled, I've just got bh, so um, base times height on the right side. So now I just need to get rid of the b. Again, it's multiplied, so I'm going to undo multiplication with division. So divide both sides by b. And when those cancel, on the left side, those aren't like terms. I can't divide 2 by b, and I can't divide a by b without knowing their values. So there's nothing else I can do to that. So I've got the h alone, h equals 2a does not want to let me make that 2. It looks like a 1, but it's supposed to be a 2. divided by b. So I've solved for h. 
Then, the very last thing, it says find the height of a triangle with an area of 30 square centimeters and a base of 6 centimeters. Now, you can just go right to the 1 half base times height and plug those in, but then you have to go through all the steps to get that h alone again. We already got h alone when we solved the formula. So plug this into the answer from a. If I want to know the height, that means I'm looking for h. So h equals, and then use the formula that I had, 2 times a. So in this case, a is 30, so I've got 2 times 30. And then divided by the B, which is 6. So 2 times 30 is 60. 60 divided by 6 is 10. So I now have H equals 10 centimeters. Don't forget the label. It's important. I don't know why it always starts off writing OK, and then by the end it's just looks like I'm in kindergarten, maybe preschool. So 10 centimeters there is our final answer. And that is it for this lesson.